subjectivity and consciousness. The experience of being conscious is subjective by default. Therefore, subjectivity is often understood as the essence of consciousness. Our sense of subjectivity is twofold. First, it is epistemological in the sense that we place great value on personal experience as a guide for substantiating beliefs and arguments. Second, subjectivity has a very profound phenomenological component. But this subjective aspect of existence is also the breeding ground for most biases. Subjectivity gives us a certain kind of knowledge of our mental state of consciousness. Subjectivity is immediate to the subject and enjoys a certain kind of first-person authority. Subjective knowledge is immediate because it is not based on any other external arguments other than personal experience. First-person authority however, cannot be seen as unconditionally absolute. There are conceivable circumstances by which the subjective claim to truth can be overridden. For example, at the moment when the subject becomes aware that he has misdescribed a particular sensation, the whole context of the experience can alter. The system of the fourth way tells us, that man is by default focused on itself, projecting its personal and subjective perspective on events. This phenomena is called, internal consideration. Taking a third-person perspective however, is an act of self-remembering, and promotes awareness to the other side of the subjective experience. In the system that phenomena is being referred to, by the term, external consideration. One who remembers himself, is shifting the subjective internal perspective to the objective, external perspective. Moreover, advancing insight when unmasking subconscious dispositions, usually has a transformational effect on the quality of the content of consciousness. Since the subject always has a privileged first-person position with respect to its own content of consciousness, it is almost inevitable that a certain asymmetry will arise between a first-person and a third-person position. Therefore, it is not necessary to require complete transparency in validating subjective knowledge. Subjective knowledge enjoys a certain immunity from a third-person position. This does not mean that a first-person position necessarily equates with a strict conception of Cartesian dualism that states that the subject's thinking is identical to absolute truth. Some philosophers have pointed out that subjectivity poses a sort of point of view consciousness that can be associated with the notion of standpoint epistemology or perspectionism. Standpoint epistemology states that the unique knowledge that springs from the direct and personal experience of specific members of a specific social group can be a valuable addition to objective epistemological methods. In spite of the fact that standpoint epistemology, akin to point of view consciousness, is by default highly subjective, it does not follow that these strands of epistemological methods are useless in the search for true justified beliefs. It is clear that there has been significant shift in valuation of what is epistemological valid. This shift tells us that objective knowledge is no longer the highest ideal of finding truth.
subjective conscious mental states that have been carefully reflected on by higher order thinking can most certainly be a very valuable addition in requiring knowledge. This conclusion stands in close relation to the axiomatic truth that each and every one of us has when experiencing conscious states of consciousness in every day, day-to-day -day life. In short, subjectivity doesn't tell us much about the objective reality. On the other hand, subjective knowledge is a function of identification with the concrete lived reality of the subject, and signals, in clear phenomenological voice, in what way that present reality is highly relevant to the subject.